Good morning, it's your crazy old coot here. Today we're talk, going to talk about um, the uh, Atari 1050 boot error problem and the, the fix. Now, this sensor right here is going to make me the hero to millions. Um, well, I'm hero to thousands. Oh, okay, okay, maybe tens of people. What it is, is the, the Atari 1050, which we have here, that has it. one of the common errors is boot error. And that usually happens when the, uh, some people call it the, the park sensor for the head or the track zero sensor dies. And they don't make that sensor anymore. And I did searches on the internet and most people have jury rigged something where this looks to be almost a a simple drop-in replacement okay now so we're gonna go over it and I'll show you how if you do have a Atari 1050 and it's giving you an error how to, to prove that a it's the sensor and then how to install uh, this new sensor to uh, take its place. So the first thing we got to do is we got to take apart the Atari 1050. Okay. In order to do that, we're gonna have to take six screws off, and the six screws are on the bottom. You got four of the screws are deeply inserted in the corners, and these are Phillips screws. Then you get two screws that are right here, that are right underneath the black cowling of the front. Now this black cowling on the front comes off with the cover, okay? So we've got the screws out of the, the unit. Mm -hmm. They were in here, okay? So now, just lift this up, and slide that forward a little bit, and off comes the cover. And here we go inside. Now, right here, that's the sensor, okay? And there's the flag. Now to test to see if that the sensor is dead, what you gotta do is you gotta push this so the flag is inside the sensor, and then power it up. And once it's powered up, it should move forward, stop, and then move back if it's good. If it's bad, it will just move forward and stop. Okay, ready? Here we go. Now you see how the flag moved out of the way of the sensor, but it didn't come back in. That's how you can tell that it's bad. Now, there's one more test to do. Okay, so what the final test is over here is J10. Okay, right in there, that's J10. Okay, so we're gonna pull J10 off and be careful not to pull the wires out. You may wanna use pliers. Let me get my pliers. Okay, so see I've got J10 off. Now these pins are numbered one through four from the front. You want to short the first two out. You can use the jumper or whatever. I'm just gonna use my uh, pliers. And you uh, you put the flag back in the middle. Bobby, you I want you to turn it on. Okay, now you turn on the. Oh, it is? Yeah. Okay, hang on, I got it. Hold, hold that. Okay, so what's gonna happen 
is this should move back. And if it does, then we know the circuit's good and it is the sensor. So what you, uh, but you gotta be ready to shut it off once it does, cause you don't wanna grind the motor into the stock. So we got that nice and shorted and here we go. You see how it moved back? So we know that the electronics works, the sensor is bad. Okay, so this is the old sensor. And this is the new sensor. Okay, now I put these together and you can see that these things are just about identical. It's identical as you want them to be, okay? So physically, these are identical. They're even so identical, because this spacer fits on this. And that was one of the things I was worried about. I wasn't sure about this piece here, but this piece here absolutely just fits right in to where it was on the other sensor. So now I'm gonna physically mount this sensor in where the old sensor is was. And there was just two screws that mounted this on. And you just had to clip the little tie wrap and this comes right out. Okay, so I've got the sensor mon uh, mounted back in. The new sensor is in here. Like I said, it fit right in. I had miked the distance between here and here, here with a, my micrometer. And uh, I set it up for the same distance and then uh, I, I uh, soldered up the wires and used heat shrink tube nice and good. Okay, there's the setup right there. Here, wire one goes to green, wire two goes to white, uh, wire three goes to black, and wire four goes to red. And again, that's numbered from front to back, one, two, three, four, okay? So, now again, I'm gonna push the flag into the sensor. And like I said, this fit perfect. Even this, the uh, spacer here for that screw, which is a stop, it's a physical stop, fit right in. So we're in here, that should move out and then move back in. Okay, ready? One, two, three. It's alive, it works. So now we're gonna show that it works in real life on a game. And this is what, the Cavern of Mars? Yes. Hold your breath. Now, 8-Bit Gaming is a uh, little bit of a learned aptitude, especially for modern young kids. Oh, it's got it. So this shows that the, you know, the 1080, the, the 1050 works now that it's had the uh, sensor replaced. I don't think you've gotten this far before, have you? Shoot! This is your Crazy Oku, wishing you a good evening. Thank you very much.